Hello, you beautiful, wonderful people, and welcome back to another episode of Hitting the Bars. It is Kelty, virtually beside Savvy Wavy One. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's a beautiful Monday for us. We're getting a bit of a heat wave, and I just trained somebody at 7 a.m., and it was still so hot. How are you? Oh, nice. I'm last week I was hungover and this week I'm jet lagged. So, you know, in shambles, you don't know what you're going to get from me today, but it's sunny in Sweden. So I'm going to take it and run with it. And I'm a plant thriving off the vitamin D today. So life's good. I love that. So is it mm -hmm. springtime for them then? It's Canadian and Swedish spring. So it's spring in both, but like our spring just means, Ooh, the snow's melting. It doesn't mean it's warm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's not okay. like pitch black in the morning. So I'll That's take a that. bonus. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. How long are you here for? Two and a half weeks. Next, it's Monday now. So next Friday, I head back. So it's just oh. a short one. Just short. Yeah, little so pop it's a in, really short one. Pop in for Meg's birthday and then go back to Canada for a little bit. And then I'll be back for the summer in Sweden. So a little hip and hop. I had some points. So we took advantage and hopped over here. I love it. That's amazing. How, how, how old is he turning? 33. He's a nine to one. Old man Jenkins. Mm hmm. I was like, what was it? I, I always think of it's like, no one cares about you when you're 23. I was like, no, I think it should be no one cares about you when you're 32. The swap, the Blink 182 song. <laughs> yes. It's, oh my gosh. It's like, early 30s are so ambiguous. It's like 30 is a big one, and 35 is like, oh, but like, no one knows 31 to 34. I was like, it's just like this ambiguous time of life, I feel. You forget it's how kinda old like you are. Kind of like 27. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say yeah. Yeah, 26 to 29 doesn't exist and 31 to 34 doesn't exist. It's just like a blob. <laughs> Did you ever have a sweet 16 party? I mean, technically, but I not like the shows, not like MTV. Yeah. I remember wishing, but I don't Do you remember the remember. song? Gonna spread my wings, oh, sweet yeah. 16. <laughs> I love Hillary Duff. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't even remember. Just, oh, just instant oh, I do. core memories back. It's mm -hmm. one of those ones you just have to hear it. And I'm like, oh, yes. But, yeah. but no, I agree. I did not have a sweet 16. I had like a sleepover with friends. Yeah. We did the milk challenge, oh, which nice. is very lame, where you just chug a bunch of milk and mm -hmm. see until you vomit. So that was me at 16. That sums it it's up. I know I always celebrate my birthday, but I was like, it clearly wasn't a significant birthday because I can't even remotely remember what I did. Like, yeah. I couldn't tell you who was there, where I celebrated it. I have no idea. That's quite scary. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that, that memory is just gone. It doesn't, I have to call my mom and ask. Yeah. So if you ever have, this is a reminder for anybody that like maybe is disappointed on their birthday. Maybe somebody didn't go all out for it. Maybe you had to work. You honestly won't remember it in like two years. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that like. So she like 13 to like 18. Well, 18, you'll always remember, but maybe 12 to 17. They're like, your birthday is such a big deal. And you yeah. I, I don't remember any. I don't remember a single one of those. I remember under the age of eight and over the age of 18. The rest, couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you yeah. what I did. Blends in. <laughs> so what's your hot take, ma'am? My hot take is more of a question. What is airport shoe etiquette? Now airplane, should say specifically, because I just had to do an overnight. And now I guess if you had a lay down bed, yeah, take off your shoes. No one's seeing you. But I just had a, a just a regular seat. What are your thoughts on do you take the shoes off? Obviously not barefoot, but socks. Do you say shoes off or shoes stay on? Because sleeping with shoes on is vulgar. But then I also get taking your shoes off also vulgar. What are your thoughts? Oh, gross. Keep your shoes on. Even for your own hygiene. Like... I wouldn't want my socks touching the floor because if you think about it, a plane is just a bus and like mm -hmm. people are, I have been next to people that are disgusting. One time mm -hmm. I had this lady put on her compression socks and like sprawl out and it was just so gross that like, I don't even want to touch the floor knowing that other people's bare feet and socks have been there. Mm -hmm. So I'm a keep shoes girl on and just don't have chunky shoes and yep. definitely no foot flops. If, oh, you, no. if I see someone barefoot going through security, I'm like, oh, honey, like cancel them immediately. Oh, yeah. I was, flip flops, hard no. That's why like slides with socks actually is the best thing. And it says they're just shoes that you slide on and off. I have a pair of like APLs that are just like slide in, slide off. Perfect it's airport shoes. But I'm kind of like the when I, I can't physically sleep with shoes on. So I'm like, I bring an extra pair of socks. 
And then I just curl in a little ball. So I wait till like my feet are under a blanket. You know what I mean? So no one else is exposed to them. Tuck them under. And then if I go to the washroom, I'll just put my shoes back on. But I'm like, so, I can physically not sleep with shoes on, but I make sure it's so stealth that no one knows. And then I bring like, a ton of extra socks and switch the socks. But I'm like, I'm wondering how hard I'm getting judged if anyone notices. And I know I'm getting judged, but I'm like, you know what? My, I, my feet don't smell, but sometimes I'll smell them and I'm like, and then I, then shoes stay on. But if no one can notice the smell, yeah, I do it. I do it. I'm yeah, I'm sorry. judging you. Please I'm do. judging you. I, it's I like, like a, you, I don't wear my new balances because those are chunky. I'm like mm -hmm. practical with the type of shoe that I know I can like fit into crevices yeah. and not notice. But yeah, if you have the lay down seats and you know, who cares? But when you're sure. next to people, I mean, think about it. Do you want your neighbor's socks? No. So all depends. All depends. Like I won't lie. If I just saw someone put on a clean pair of socks and they're, they didn't smell, I'm kind of like, you know what? I respect it. I respect it. It's such a lie. I don't believe it. Um, wait, what are your thoughts on airport airplane etiquette with um, the seat going back? Uh, I think if you're, it's like nighttime, you know what I mean? I was like, bring it back. And eventually it's going to happen. Aside from that, I'm like, keep it up. Like if we're all sitting there, don't put it back. But if it's people have to sleep, it's a red eye, put it back. That's my thought. What about you? Really? Oh, yeah. I put it back. You put it back? I just don't Especially see the... Especially I, with if the person in front of me puts it back, I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, it's a train. True. I'm putting it back. That, you put it back now. Like, I'm not going to be sitting there with it touching my forehead because it's so low. True. I will say that's the only time I push it back, except when sleeping. If it, the person in front of me pushes it back, then I'm like, well, I need to make room. But otherwise, I'm like, I'd rather my seat be upright. Like, I don't feel, I don't find it really? more comfortable with it back. Like, I feel that huh? hurts my lower back. So I keep it up straight. But maybe that's wow. just me. Yeah. Yeah, but that's interesting. I'm pretty okay. chill. I'm pretty chill about it. I won't lie. I'm okay. kind of like, you know what? I get it. Get comfy. We're all in this together. I've just seen some d debates on it on how like they think it's really rude to put it back. And I'm like, it goes back for a reason, people. It goes yeah, back I, for a reason. I never find it rude. If someone puts it back, I'm like, eh, put it back. It is what it is. But always <laughs> when you put it back, slowly do it. Because what if like I hate when like you have – drinks or food and they like slam it back and then it spills yeah. or like you have an ipad i always like slowly like i'm warning them it's mm. going back well there's if you're nervous about it i'm like i've done that before i've like if i've had to put it back i just go behind i'm like you okay if i put it back and then boom problem solved just ask the person. yeah i agree mm -hmm. okay well my hot take well first off i apologize everybody for my audio on last week's episode we had some technical difficulties didn't know it until you know it was too late mm -hmm. and then now I have a weed whacker outside. Can you hear that? No. I feel like my mic's not picking it up, so I'm really happy about it, but the joys, the joys of living oh, fun. in a neighborhood. But anyways, my first hot take is sourdough should be a popular thing anywhere, and I really do believe that because I love sourdough bread. I think it's healthier for you. Don't quote me on that, but I've heard about that, and I just think it tastes better as well. I cannot find sourdough for the life of me. And granted, I live on an island, but like the sourdough at the store is like, yeah. it's fake sourdough. It's creepy yeah. looking. So there's this one bakery. It's this coffee shop I go to and they have sourdough and I have to get there. It opens at eight. I have to get there at eight, like oh two, and someone's already picked up the first loaf and they only mm -hmm. make like two to three. Mm -hmm. And so I have to like pre-order, like I'm going all out of my way because I'm so sick of just like whole wheat bread. I, yeah. I just want sourdough. It's so crunchier, tastier. And yeah, I think that might be a me problem. It's definitely a hundred percent a you problem. Cause I was going to be like, really? I say that's the complete opposite. Like it's almost like a selling feature now, like in Vancouver, obviously in Europe, like Europe bread culture, like everything's sourdough, but like it's gotten to the point in Vancouver. It's like, oh, you just serve regular bread. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's just like restaurants. Like, this is how we get people in. Sourdough, sourdough. So I was like, I don't think I've gone a day without eating sourdough bread in probably four years. And I don't what? consciously go out of my way for it. It's just like, everywhere I sell sourdough. Now, it depends like how, like you said, there's like, some are better quality sourdough. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're really sour and really fermented. Um, but yeah, I, that's an island problem. You got to go up north, up north. We've, we've. We got nothing else to do but make sourdough bread. <laughs> Clearly. But I mean, I, I feel like I'm a basic American where I get yeah. the Dave Killers bread. I don't know what that is. That's obviously not sourdough. 
You don't know what so. Dave Killer's bread is? I don't think we don't have that in Canada. So oh, I don't I don't know. It's a staple. Like let me it's see. It's all need to over. Co- I mean, I only shop at Costco, guys. I don't have options here. Dave. But Shirley. Costco doesn't even have sourdough. Someone told me they did and I hunted and they don't. And I don't want a baguette. That's not practical to eat with. I need a loaf. I feel uh, like you would know. They're like really popular here. Dave, the, the Dave's bread, you mean? Killer bread. Yeah. yeah I just looked at bread. it. I've seen it on TikTok. Maybe we have it, but that's not like a, that's not one of our, that's our main guys. Okay. Yeah. So. Healthy Canadians over there. What can I say? Or Europe too. But you know, it's just, yeah. yeah. I just, oh, sourdough. Mm. Chef's kiss. So good. I know. So that's my, my little grime for the week. I'm like, ugh. I tried to get it yesterday and they were like, oh no, we're out. And I'm like, you're always out. Just make more. Just make more. I will say there is restaurants though in Vancouver that like specialize in sourdough. And if you don't get there in time, they're like, we're sold out for the day. So that happens. Like yeah. places sell out of it. But oh. There was a farmer's market I went to in San Juan that it was like nine o'clock. It opened at like 8.30, already sold out. And then um, the other day I went to the bakery 8.03. I'm not kidding. It was 8.03. I was like, perfect. I see this man walking away with a big bag and I'm like, motherfucker. And I go and they only had one left of, like sourdough. Oh. That man took like three loaves. And I was like, wow. oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Rude. I know. Rude. Rude. That's, that's actually, if you know that a place doesn't have much, don't be that person. This is in Costco. Don't buy I a I agree. I agree. Yeah. So anyway, should we get into today's topics? We should. And number one, are you now best friends with Billie Eilish? I got to ask, because I don't know if you saw this. She no, asked, I didn't see this. Okay. She added, and it was all over X, all over Twitter. She added her 110 million followers to her close friends, but it's probably going to be a publicity thing. And it's kind of like, oh, you were following me before this. You get to be on my close friends kind of thing. But it just got me wondering, because at first we all thought it was this like accident and things got leaked. Have you ever accidentally posted something? on your main that was meant to be on your close friends. <laughs> and if Absolutely. so, I need to know. Tell. Absolutely. I think it's something like nothing crazy. Yeah. I just like, I don't ever show the front of my house or like, you know, like security reasons because there's mm-hmm. creepy guys out there. Yeah. Um, and I think I've accidentally just done that, but nothing crazy. I mean, mm. I feel like I, I don't hide anything. It's just usually like where I'm filming mm-hmm. or maybe like my friends. And like, yeah. I don't like to expose a lot of my friends. I don't like True. to expose Michael. I still get people being like, oh, have you and Michael broken up? I never see him. I'm like, no, I just don't like putting him on my stuff. Like he's my yeah. husband. I kind of want to keep that private. <laughs> yeah. But have you done it? Nothing stands out, but I do have a confession. What? Many, many of times, many of times I've either posted my own content on hitting the bars or hitting the bars on my own. So, so many times on YouTube, on Instagram, like I'm quick to delete it, but I've done it probably. And if anyone's seen it, probably like 15 times. Yeah. That is hilarious. And so so they all post and they'll be like, oh, that's odd that it posted. Oh, and then I'm like, oh crap. (laughs) So... So we yeah. could just think that you're advertising. Okay, True. Kelty, mm-hmm. do you ever talk about hitting the bars in your YouTube channel? Yeah, I do. And people oh, comment on it. Yeah, I've had do. so many girls be like, I didn't even know you and Kelty had a YouTube channel or a, a podcast. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. And I think she's hiding us, guys. No, she's hiding our community. Not. I think I could be better at like stating it. You know what I mean? Mm, It's mm -hmm. just like, when does it like come out? Because that's a classic thing I've also learned about YouTube. I'll say something. And then a month later, people will be like, oh, you had, I'm like, I said it a month ago. Were you not paying attention? So yeah, I don't know. That's fair. I will, I'll shut her out more, more out, but no, yeah, I just, I was like, on. yeah, I mean, but we do have it in our bio. Yeah. So I don't know. I literally just, um, a girl signed up t- for my one on one and she was like, oh, yeah, I found you through this girl Shelby's podcast. I went on mm-hmm. it as a guest. And I was like, that's so cool. She's like, yeah, I follow Kelty. I had no idea you guys even knew each other. And I was like, oh. Well, oh. yeah, I do know Kelsey I'm, very well. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's I'm okay. Sorry. But it happens. Uh, trust me, I get it all the time. People will be like, I've had this. Like, share the Spotify playlist. I'm like, it's in my story right now. <laughs> so it, I don't yeah, get it. There's annoying. so much content, so much content that like I can't blame people. But sometimes I'm like, I don't know how much more obvious I can be. So yeah. Please. Wait, I have a confession that's kind of like the Ooh. close friends. Tell. But it's instead it's a voice memo on accident. Have I ever told this on the podcast? 
I don't think so. It was in college. I won't get into the details, but it was like this group chat with like, uh, I think, yeah, it was four of us and it was all four friends. And there was a little, like one girl hooked up with a friend's like ex Mm -hmm. and was like kind of hiding it. Like she was being shysty. And the friend that like found out about it and was like, you lied to me about this. She was my roommate. And so of course I'm going to side with her. She's like to this day, one of my best friends. And so, um, they wanted to come visit Two of the friends wanted to come visit us in college because they weren't Mm -hmm. in that college anymore. And I accidentally held my thumb down and I was, I was at work and I was telling one of my friends at work being like, Oh yeah, we might have these friends, but it's really uncomfortable right now in our friend group. They need to work this out. It's it's just really awkward. And I'm kind of being like, I feel really bad. And I didn't say anything bad. I just was like, I feel really bad for my friend. Like that's pretty shitty to feel you know, you ask and she denies and then you find out later it was true. And all she needed to do was just talk to her and she would have been fine with it. That whole thing sends, accidentally sends oh. to the group chat. And I'm like, oh my God. So I call the third friend that has nothing to do with this. I'm like, can you hear me talk about this? And she was like, dude, barely. Like you're so far away. I, I can't hear what you're really saying. The girl listened and the girl was so mad at me. <laughs> and I, once again, it was nothing damning. It was straight yeah. facts. Me just being like, yeah. I feel awkward. And I also feel really bad. Yeah. So she wasn't like that mad. She just was like, I think she just was kind of like, I didn't realize you guys would discuss this without me. And I'm like, yeah. duh. Like, obviously yeah. we're going to talk about this. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's my confession of like a close friend Ooh. situation where it Ooh. didn't mean to go to him and it did. And Ooh. now I forever watch if I'm voice memoing, but. I didn't even know. I didn't even know how to voice memo back then. I think it was a complete yeah. accident. Just my thumbs on it. Yeah, and it was super awkward. Brutal. Well, if you want to submit a confession session, there's an idea. Submit it yeah. to us, and we'll read it next week. Of any times you've accidentally uploaded close friends, texted the wrong person, we've all been there. We've yeah, all been there. So with Billie Eilish, is it anything significant that she wouldn't post usually? No, it was just like this random post, and you know how you have the little green thing. So everyone at first mm-hmm. was like, oh my God, you, I mean, when you first, I'm on like, Billy Eilish's close friends. And then, and then everyone went to X and everyone was like, oh no, it's all 110 million. And it's probably a publicity stunt. But for a brief moment, 110 million of us thought we were Billy Eilish's best friend. <laughs> wow. You know, did you hear about her little dig at Taylor Swift? I did. And then did you mm. hear the apology? No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. she in. came out. She just she, she just came out and she's like, I wasn't hinting at anyone like directly. And like, I've even who I was listening to podcasts and they're talking about it. And she brought up some people. I don't want to call it exactly because I heard this from a podcast, but she was mm. hinting at just people in general. And she even like called herself out. But she was like, this isn't directed at any one person. And then like, I think they brought up K-pop is actually one example. Like that's one industry that sells multiple different vinyls for each album so it's like not just a taylor swift thing but i think people instantly were like who sells multiple things taylor swift and so but she came out and she's like no this is like an industry problem i'm not oh good so it came out it was not a poor timing maybe it's no i hate to say it's the swifties assuming everything's about taylor swift they're like someone mentioned multiple vinyls taylor swift does multiple vinyls like you know what i mean that was a the Swifties always a little on edge and a little protective. <laughs> well, you know what? We're going to protect yeah. her. Okay. I, but I respect it, but sometimes I do, bites in the butt. <laughs> I don't understand her multiple vinyls period because yeah. I'm like, my friend has bought like three in a row because she's mm-hmm. like, Oh shoot. Now it has this song and now it has this song. Yeah. I never understand it. Cause I don't have a record player. So people have vinyls, please explain it to me. But yeah. I'm like, I, do, I never understand the difference. I feel like whenever I'm on my Instagram, it's like, this is now live. This is now live. And I'm like, wait, yeah. what is the difference? So, I mean, don't have vinyls, but I just wait yeah. for the whole album to come out on Apple. Let's be real. I mean, I love a vinyl. There's one like literally right there. But like, oh, there like you go. don't you just want the OG? Like, I don't get the, I guess I'm like, I want the original. I don't want exclusive eighth edition. I'm like, no, give me the OG, the one mm-hmm. tried and true. But that's yeah, just for me. sure. Olivia Rodrigo drops like a vinyl. And she added like an extra song that nobody got. And it was like mm-hmm. dumb playing. And then this song came on. That Ooh. was cool. That was see cool. That, I saw it on TikTok. That was I'm neat like that. of her. See, little things like that, that I can get behind. But the just like add, yeah. Sometimes I'm like, mm, is that needed? Consumerism? We're all going broke. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, number two headline. This is for us because we're always talking about white sneakers. And the ultimate it girl, Zendaya. She was spotted wearing the on cloud woman's Roger Court sneakers, which I kind of talked about last week. I was like, those one I interested in. And it just gets me thinking. She had this cute workout outfit. Everyone loves the sambas, but they're hurting everyone's feet. And I'm like, maybe could this be the new it shoe? I don't think so. But I'm like, if someone could do it, it's Zendaya. So I'm like, it's I just said cloud Roger. Yeah, the Roger. Yeah, on cloud Roger sneaker. You'll see it. They kind of look like sambas. I'm looking it up as we speak. Images. Oh yeah, are they supposed yeah, to be good for walking since they're on cloud or no? It literally looks like yeah. a ripoff, actually, of like Nike. They've had these for a while, so really, yeah, it's like an older model, but they're like bringing it more and more. I'm kind of like, hmm, they're in Don't that they same look the same. Is the Nike or Vita's? Every... Like they all have this like same staple shoe. Well, it is a basic white shoe. You know how totally. crazy can a basic white shoe get without no longer being basic? So true. Like, but all those ones hurt the feet. Like they're bad arch support they're not that cushiony so i'm i'm curious about these and i'm yeah. like zendaya might have influenced me might oh, have i might have to she test not? them i know she's I, perfection did you hear that they like haven't started filming euphoria i've never seen it yeah i feel like it would depress me honestly but like mm -hmm. i heard that they aren't filming and they like kind of let the actors take on other roles yeah i because i thought I read somewhere once they weren't going to refilm to like 2025 or some crazy, wow. which, which makes sense. It makes sense. Those like characters, like not characters, those actors are in like their prime. Yeah. And, you Sydney know what I mean? Sweeney all over. And she just did Dune like Zendaya. I was like, you got it. Like I, mm -hmm. Euphoria is cool, but to do Dune and like Sydney Sweeney have her first like number one starring lady moments in like Hollywood movies. I'm like, you kind of let their fly versus like one or two of them quit. And then the show falls apart. I was like, I think that's actually, we love yeah. when Hollywood is nice to their actors. It's so rare to hear that. <laughs> I agree. Um, I really want to see Zendaya's new movie with the two tennis players, the boys. Which, so what? I don't know if you've probably haven't seen, the, I get the commercial on TikTok. I've yeah. seen this commercial like, oh my God, I swear a year ago. And it's basically she, I don't know if she's like a tennis coach or I don't know what the story is with tennis. But it's these two guys, and they essentially like want to both be with Zendaya from the trailer. Like it yeah. looks spicy, and everyone's like, "That looks mm. so good." Because Zendaya's not one to do a spicy film, right? Like yeah. I don't, I've never seen Euphoria, so I don't know if there's sex scenes with her. I know there is. Period. Yeah, I've never seen that show. But like you know, Spider Man, wholesome. Like Dune, the first one I didn't see her even really talk to Timothy Chalamet for like till the mm -hmm. end. So. I'm interested, and everyone's kind of like, oh my god, spicy. I'm for this, because I'm looking. First, Zendaya, hit number one. Two, tennis. I love tennis. Three, the other star's last name is O'Connor. So I feel Ooh. I'm shocked at I'm a target, probably, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> somewhere at one point. Just like I'm related to the Wright brothers. Yeah, exactly. You invented flying. I know. Where where are my uh where's my money for that, you know? Yeah, well I was thanks to Boeing, there's no money left. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So all gone, just separate yourself from that. Separate. Mm-hmm. Okay, I well, had we'll to check out the on cloud show shoes. Oh sorry, what were you saying? I, I was just gonna say that the Boeing seven thirty seven Max eight or whatever the one that's causing all the problems, I had to fly to Iceland like eight hours. No. I'm like that feels real comfy. I was like, Why is this ticket so cheap? <laughs> they bought it and after I was like that's why it's so cheap. I was like, oh no. Oh, so were you kind of nervous or no? Turbulence was a little bit scarier than oh. normal this time. I was like, it's, it's okay, Kelty, breathe, breathe. But in the, you know, in that moment, it, it was kind of nice because I was like, you know, all those little problems I have, I like, you just have to survive. I'm so thankful for all my problems. I'll pay all the taxes. Just get me back. <laughs> yeah. That's Michael is so extreme about flying. Like he gets bad anxiety with it that he purposely will not cho like choose that plane where mm. I don't think I even, I'm going to be honest. I don't even look at the planes. I'm just like book, cheap ticket book. Yeah. But like my family, a lot of my cousins, my uncles were pilots. My mom's a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like I've gone to them and been like, what are your thoughts on this? And a lot of the times, I mean, they do say the Boeing thing, like they cut corners and it's quite shit. Um, but like, 
usually they're like, you know, because of this, they try mm-hmm. to really fix them and like you sure. won't have a problem. So I guess I don't think about it. Where he, we just booked our flight to Europe and he was like, oh my gosh, we're like jumping through hoops just to not take this plane. And I'm like, all right, like if it makes you feel better, it's totally fine. That's his job. We have yeah. dedicated jobs. I call it a boy job. You book the travel. I'm just going to show up and look pretty. Perfect. I love that mm-hmm. for you. And case number two that you are actually related to right that everyone in your family's in flying, I think. I bet you you're somewhere in there. You're somewhere in there related. Maybe it just got passed down, right? Right? It's a gene. (laughs) I'll take it. Now, another just pop culture moment. Have you been paying attention to the Rebel Wilson memoir drama? Oh my God, I have. So I love Rebel Wilson. It got... The drama is getting so much that it's being delayed in Australia due to the Sasha Baron Cohen drama. So like, I'm like, I wonder if there's an actual, like, I just saw like it's getting delayed. I was like, I wonder if he's actually taking like legal action. And I'm like, this makes me want to read it even more now. I heard he was taking legal action. I guess it's confirmed. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be I defama- like- right? He could sue for defamation. Yeah, it looks like he did because it's taking a while. And this is just in Australia specifically, but I'm like, is this the best publicity ever for a book? I'm like, absolutely. Cause yeah, I totally, I don't read a lot of memoirs. I read Britney yeah. Spears and that's the last memoir I read. Yeah. I kind of want to read this. Cause I hear she like kind of just spills everything. Like she also talked yeah. about somebody that's like an asshole in the industry that like a female that's really rude. And like, I think that talked. Oh, wait, Adele. Was it Adele? Talking- oh, she's yeah. not that, uh, like, she thinks Adele hates her. Because, oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it, there was something like that. Like they're always were when they were in their bigger bodied, they were always like just associated with the two. And you could tell, yeah, there's like some drama. She doesn't know if Adele's like trying to like be like, don't associate me with that. Yeah. Which is like, it's a complicated one, but I'm just interested. And she, she kind of said that like Adele was a little standoffish and she didn't know if Adele was doing standoffish because she didn't want to like be lumped with her. Yeah. Just for the size of their body, which I'm like, you what? That sucks. Well, <laughs> she kind of like Rebel always took on those roles, almost mocking mm-hmm. it. So yeah. I could see where maybe Adele was like, I don't want to mock this. I don't want to play into this. True. Maybe, you know, she's going through her own journey, her own yeah. body image. So I could see yeah. where she might feel uncomfortable. But that's still not that nice to do to Rebel. Like, uh, it, it's one of those. I would it say it separately, maybe like, hey, girl. Oh, it's one of those, like, <laughs> you could see why Adele did it. But then also at the same time, Rebels, like, I'm not a virus. Like, let me near you. <laughs> and I feel yeah, yeah. like that was the dynamic. Like, Adele's like, sorry, I just saw it. And the Rebe- Rebels, like, coming here, just trying to be nice. And yeah, yeah, that's tricky. Oh, Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. Do you think the guy, so for viewers mm. that don't, or listeners that don't know the drama, mm. Rebel basically came out and what was the guy's name? I don't Sasha even know Bear who he Borat. Yeah. Borat. I've never seen that movie, but but you know I've who Borat is. Bo- Borat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, he was just really inappropriate on a set. I'd never even heard about the movie that they did together, mm-hmm. and I guess she refused to promote it. And he was being really inappropriate in like a sex scene or something. Like wanted to like put his finger in her butt. I think that's what it was. I I think it's the opposite. Like I think it was that like he oh, she put the, it in his. He was like he was. And like his kind of thing is like he was probably like joking around and be like, oh, let's break the ice. And then like she's like, I don't want to put your finger in the butt. Like I think it was one of those situations. I don't know who's right or wrong there, but it seems to be he asked her to put her finger in his butt. And whether was he being truthful? Was it a joke? What did she feel? Applies? I don't know. That's why I'm interested. I'm like, I don't know. We're yeah, going to find out. I mean, if that is true, it's like he could have been in Ooh. trouble a lot more than just that. Yeah. So like, he's making it dramatic like just Mm -hmm. i would own up to whatever it is move on he's the one that's like getting this publicity so and maybe that's a tactic maybe he likes that too true or maybe it isn't true and then he is defending or maybe it is true why would some why like why would she lie about that i would assume she didn't honestly i won't lie lean on like a rebel side because i can't think she'd make that up at the same time right it'd be weird to make that up and yeah that's where i'm like I, I, I'm so torn between like people never believe women or they think it's yes. their fault or like they're being dramatic. And like even when Taylor Swift sued that exec, that producer that like yeah. was harassing her and literally has a photo of him putting his hand on her ass. Yeah. Like proof. And people still didn't believe her. Like it's just That's so crazy. annoying. Like we've all heard that where someone's like, it's, 
oh, well, you know, she was too drunk, like whatever. Mm -hmm. She's still X, Y, and Z. You're like, no, why don't you believe her? Like, obviously she didn't want to. And like, it's one of those things. Why would someone just randomly make that up? You know what I mean? That's why I always lean. Like, it was like, it was so long ago. It wasn't like it just happened yesterday or something and it got like taken out of context. I'm like, she's had time to think about this and she wrote it in a book. Like, you think she would, I don't know if I'm putting on paper, I would assume. It's like, she doesn't we'll mind him. burning him. Yeah. Yeah. So be interesting. And the fact she didn't promote it, that's why I'm also like, it just seems there's something fishy there. And I guess we'll find yeah. out. If she did promote it and like she's now coming out, it'd be a little weird. But how like mm-hmm. it kind of, you could date back and be like, wow, literally nobody heard of this movie because mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z. That makes sense. The receipts are adding up, but we'll mm-hmm. see. Once again, we'll see. Okay. Now. A little fitness pop culture news. Not really pop culture It's kind of been a pop culture topic for, dare I say, a decade. But I saw this release. Carrie Underwood's legs. Famous. Perfection. Just strong, muscular, we love. Now, I found on, while well, I was browsing the articles, her workout. So I was going to get your reaction to one of a Carrie Underwood's workout. Would you do it? Do you think this is the reason for her legs? Now. Three supersets. Superset number one. Round one, heel elevated dumbbell squats, 12 to 15 reps. Dumbbell crossover step ups, touchdown, 12 reps on each leg. We can put this on the story if we want, if anyone wants like the exact. Then superset number two, dumbbell deficit dumo deadlift. Superset it with Bosu dome body weight single leg deadlift. That's a tongue twister. And then Bosu up and overs. And the last superset, which I don't know why they call it a superset because it's one exercise log hops one 12 reps per side one minute what are your thoughts what is a log hop have you ever seen like just think of a on the bench maybe yeah and you like jump over it oh Do you know what I, mean? I didn't know that was called a log hop that's interesting also, also funny thing about the fitness industry and i always because i've researched a lot of these celebrity workouts there's a lot of exercises that don't have names that people you can tell make up they're like, I don't know what it's oh, called. Yeah. It's called a log hop. And then like you see like 15 different. And sometimes I'm like, there actually isn't a name for this exercise. So I'll call it uh, eye level resistance band pull. I'm like, it- yeah. So that's totally. a funny quirk of the fitness industry. Yeah. That sounds like kind of fun. I have a leg day today. Maybe I'll try it. Honestly, give it a go. That's interesting. A lot of balance mm-hmm. in that. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, makes sense right? though. She's got a balance in heels. She's got a dance in heels. So it makes yeah. sense. I've been that like stability. There's a little mm-hmm. tip for the girlies who are having trouble walking in heels, want a bit more strength, some Bosu ball stability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like, I like doing, I'll always add in one Bosu ball like exercise if I can at the gym and it's mm-hmm. empty, like there's no one around it. I'll go there just because my balance is horrible. I'm like, I did not compete in beam. <laughs> like it's so yeah. bad. <laughs> what do you think of it? I was like, I think it's one, here's what I always get about celebrity workouts whenever I see these. I'm like, that's a solid workout. That's nice. Mm -hmm. But I think we always get these, like people are going to read this and be like, oh my gosh, she does this every day and she has Mm -hmm. those legs. And I'm like, she might've done that once, maybe for two weeks. But you know what I mean? Like so many of these celebrities have personal trainers and every time they come into the gym, it's going to be changed to their mood, all this. So I've always found that funny about celebrity workouts. So I'm like, this might've been their workout for two weeks the likelihood they kept up it's it's not the case like you know what i mean it's like in it's physically impossible to do the same workout as a celebrity because they're they're not doing the same workout every day they're just i think it just comes down to consistently doing weight training targeted towards your legs and you'll get yeah. good legs that's kind of i it completely works. agree yeah you're a little delulu if you think like like have you ever watched on youtube it's like what I eat in a day as a Victoria's Secret model, how I work oh, out yeah. as a Victoria's Secret model. I'm like, oh my mm-hmm. God, come on, come on. Being six foot. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's fun to watch, but honey, that's a lot oh, yeah. of genetics. Let's be real. <laughs> like, Or even like, and I've called this out countless times on YouTube, like you do, you follow, and that was a trend. We all followed one of their, what I eat in a day. I'm like, they don't eat that every single day. I think that was just like, even just culture, like toxic early 2000 magazine culture. It's like blanks diet. I'm like, I bet you they just kind of were like, what you eat? And they're like, oh, sometimes I eat this for breakfast and this lunch. And then suddenly every girl is following said lunch. And I was like, she just said soup. This doesn't mean she's eating just like a can of soup. It just means she likes soup and a sandwich. Like it's, yeah. oh, media. A liquid diet. Oh, no. The oat zempic liquid diet. Oat zempic, yes. I'm tempted to try it just to see what it tastes like. Not to actually try it, but I'm like, 
blended oats, lime, and cinnamon. Yeah. Just Actually, keep me updated. Could be, could be okay. Could be okay. But this is the lime is what sounds so gross. But then like key lime, I'm like, I'm hoping it gives like key lime pie energy. That was mm. my hope. Okay. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, if I had some yogurt, a little whipped cream, <laughs> then I'm like, it's not really the it's rest of the daily workout. But you know, it sounds delicious when I add that to it. So yeah. Kel- Kelty Zempic. <laughs> there you go. Whipped cream, oatmeal, <laughs> little ice cream. So anyways, to be determined. Headline number two. Have you heard of this? I've suddenly started seeing it because I saw a TikTok of this girl's husband competing in it. High Rocks. It's this like new race. It's kind of like CrossFit and it's this global race you can sign up for. So it's a mashup of a five miles of running and then you do eight functional fitness uh, exercises. So like the ski, ski regs, those like, Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know what I mean, just think of the two handles you're pulling down and it's like a cardio machine, sled pulls, burpees, broad jumps, and just kind of functional exercises like that. And there are eight of them. So I think you do the five mile run and then you compete it. Sounds horrible, but... I'm like, do you think this is the new CrossFit? Have you heard it? Because I heard of like, suddenly everyone's doing it. I'm seeing this everywhere. I have never heard of this, but mm-hmm. maybe I don't get out much. Um, the fact I live on an island, there's one CrossFit yeah. place I've been to. Yeah. But um, I mean, I think it's cool. It's like whatever gets you going, whatever gets you excited. Yeah. And if you're bored with like traditional CrossFit, you might as well. Mm-hmm. I think the one qualm I have with CrossFit is like form ne- doesn't necessarily matter as mm-hmm. much as like reputi- repetition. So that's the only thing. I'm like, I, I didn't, I couldn't keep up with it because I was so stressed out with someone being like, yeah. go, 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 go as much as you can. And then I was like getting lazy on my form. So that's on yeah. me. But like, it'd be interesting to see what that actually looks like. And I wonder mm-hmm. if it'll become, so is it a real competition? Like, can it be entered in to anything or what? Yeah, I think like anyone can enter in, just like anyone can enter CrossFit. Like, I don't, it's not to the point of like, I'm sure if you win this, it's not going to be the prestige of winning the CrossFit like games and that. But I'm like, I think there just needs to be more stuff like this because I feel people are so limited. Like, you can do a powerlifting competition, but like a lot of the weightlifting girls don't want to do that. And you can do a run, but a lot of people aren't just runners. And like at the same time, like yeah, CrossFit has so much bad content. Like you, I mean, there's so many injuries. Like exactly what you said, everyone knows why CrossFit has such a bad rep. So I'm like, I just hope more things come like this. That it's like something just an average person can train for that just gets you doing more than just weightlifting, than just running. So like I, I've always felt like there just needs to be more stuff like this for adults. Just more yeah, like a playground. It's fun. Yeah. And just as a kid, like playing sports was so nice to have like a goal to work towards. But now it's kind of like, unless you're training for a race, it's just like ambiguous fitness. You're like, I'm training for longevity, which is great. But like, sometimes it's nice to have a little something to train for. competition. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Have you ever seen the one year I went to the Arnold, Mm -hmm. there was this competition. I'd never seen this before. Jousting. But, like, they literally dressed up like medieval people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's wild they offer that and that there's yeah. a demographic for it. There were uh, – there was these two girls I met um, that came to the booth and was like, you need to watch our boyfriend's joust. And I was like, okay. And I like, went and watched. And I was like, this is wild. This is so barbaric. It looks fun, yeah. but it looks scary. Words I never thought I'd hear someone say, come watch my boyfriend joust. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm like, I respect it unexpected but i respect it it was as if i was watching game of thrones but they can't kill them obviously but that's where my mind instantly went they have like a choice of a weapon like it was Mm. so strange so strange but fascinating and i was like that's cool hey you know it brings community it gets them to work out that's cool we live in a time and age that if you have a niche interest a lot of people have the niche niche interest you know what i mean you can find your people yeah now, next topic. I wonder if you've tried this. I know you're in your Pilates era. A lot of girls are in their Pilates era. There's the mega reformer. There's the reformer. And now they were labeling this as the new reformer. I'm like, it's kind of old, but I think we're going to start seeing it more. Tower Pilates. Have you used the Tower Pilates apparatus? I put a link there so you know the exact one I'm talking about. But have you had a chance to try one of these? Um, let me pull it up. So for those put- listening, as Sav pulls it up, is it's like, just think of the regular reformer, but 
was the slider, not the mega reformer, regular one one And it's kind of got this tower on the side with this like pulley you can pull down if you see it. Oh, I was thinking it's like the, is this like a Jossie posted one that was like hanging with like fuzzy handcuffs? And I was like, that's what the another, hell is that? That's another apparatus. I forget what that one's called. Um, that one is called something else, but that one you usually can never do classes. That one's very like one-on-one Pilates. You'll get that yeah. one sometimes. So and is this- the tower like, is it mostly for upper body with the attachment or what? So it's kind of a combo of the reformer and that big apparatus. It's kind of like you yeah. can do a bit of both. So you can do the pull down. So that's kind of the difference is it allows you to do these like pull down movements and a bit more like upright stuff. Um, and I would say I've used it. It's awesome, but you definitely have to be with a more trained professional with yeah, it. Totally. Do you know what I mean? Like you're, cause you're pulling and it's one way to add more weights cause you're adding like more pulleys to it. But it just kind of got me thinking we should explain a little bit about the different machines because have you noticed everyone's just calling everything pilates these days Mm -hmm. and like i like people go to agree and me too and i say pilates or i do some crunches on a mat and we call it pilates um so i was like let's we could add a little context for people and you could also i'd love to hear an update from you of your pilates era journey yeah also even the opposite with like Mm. sometimes people I've had people message me being like, I want to do Pilates, but it's really expensive. And I'm like, you can do it on YouTube. You can do it on a mat. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I think they only think, they don't realize it's reformer Pilates. There's a difference yes. in Pilates. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, well, another confession, you guys. Mm-hmm. I went, I've went. i been going every Tuesday to Pilates yeah. and it had poured down rain on Monday. And when it rains, critters come in. And um, oh. we had to pick up these boxes and put them on the carriage to like sit on them and i'm about to go step up put the box down and the instructor's like oh and i'm like what and i look down the largest cockroach (gasps) dead on my carriage where my feet are gonna go and i was like ew 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 and she was like oh and she like quickly gets disinfectant gets Mm -hmm. the cockroach but the entire time i continued working out i was like there's a family under this box and it's gonna crawl out just like this thing did it was probably faking dead it was actually alive and its family's gonna get me and like it's gonna crawl on me and um yeah that was my experience on tuesday and i i have night terrors with bugs and i had night terrors for three days straight of cockroaches. Oh my god! I don't blame you though. That's yeah. That's trauma. That's traumatizing. Gnarly, right? Like oh, I should get free no, class. That's wild. I but care. um, yeah. But uh, I guess my experience with it, I have noticed my mobility has improved so much. We even yes. have a reformer at the gym, mm-hmm. and now that I know how to stretch on it every Sunday, mm-hmm. and I go and do some deep stretches, some static holds. Nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, you've been a Pilates queen for a while. A long time. And I, my one recommendation, and I'll even explain the different machines. There's first the classical reformer. It tends to be wood. That's usually an indicator how it's a classical one. And it's, it doesn't look as aggressive. And that's the Joseph Pilates classical reformer. And I was like, if you have the money, I'd say take a few of those classes just so like you're in Sav's spot that you feel really comfortable in a reformer. And then goes the mega reformer. You're going to see this at solid core. Legree, it's a bit more intense. It's wider, it's big, thick, black, cushiony almost thing. And it's a lot more weight. It's a lot more you can slam these things, jump on and off, a bit more cardio. And that's technically not Pilates. Like I'd almost call Legree like weight training in a Pilates format versus reformer reform is a lot more rehab, getting your posture, working on mobility, realignments. You can leave the green, not realigned. Like I leave the green feeling slightly broken, but you do get a good workout from it. Now there's tower reformer, which just kind of adds that upright pulley. It's just kind of like a fun attachment to a classic reformer. And then there's what you were saying before, mat Pilates, because you can do a lot of corrective of the alignment exercises, just body weight or resistance band, or you can even, I've seen, if you go on YouTube, you can type like foam roller Pilates and people do like the ab crunches with just like a foam roller. So there's different options, but I have noticed my one really big pet peeve is I don't think Legree is always worth it. Like it's like $30 class, cheaper than 50 to 150 than a reformer, but you don't get that one-on-one attention. So I felt like I didn't really love to gr- agree. Like I did it here and there, but then I did a classical reformer for a month 
got really well trained. And then now they go back to the degree. I'm like that I have the proper form. I feel like I get a better workout. So like, that'd be my one recommendation. If you do have the money or you can go on class pass and get a couple accesses to like get really well trained before you get just thrown in the berries of Pilates where you're just the instructor only has so much time. They're like thinking about the workout and all this. And there's 20 people in the class. They can't give you that one-on-one intention. And then once again, if you're like, I don't have the money, just start with the mat Pilates and use those. And there's a lot, and you're a lot less likely to hurt yourself. Um, but those would kind of be my recommendation. Um, but what are your thoughts? I've, I feel like I just told you my thoughts. Oh, I just, I thought about the different machines, the different oh. machines. I mean, I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, I'm not as well rehearsed as you are. Mm-hmm. I kind of just started it. I would do solid core. What one was that mm-hmm. one? Is that That's the same as Ligree. Same as Ligree. Okay. Cause I was like, from how you're describing it, that would wreck my body every time. Yeah. I think mine now is more classical. So it's like, mm-hmm. or, or at least it's just, I'm still in a really hard class. I take this class. Mm-hmm. It's like for intermediate, um, advanced, but, um, it's more of like pulses or, or just taking no breaks. Um, but no, I mean, I like it. I've never tried the tower. I've I've honestly just started dipping my toes in it. It's expensive. Like it's, I think like 35 a class. Like I think that's expensive, Mm -hmm. but, um, I would prefer like 20, but I think it's worth it because I don't work my mobility and it's really gotten me comfortable to do it. So like, mm-hmm. I've always been like, oh, I can't touch my toes. Like it's embarrassing. I've literally had the Pilates teacher call me out and be like, mm-hmm. come on, you can do deeper. And I'm like, I literally can't like, trust <laughs> me. And I think it's good. Cause then on those Sundays, when I go to the reformer at, you know, at our gym, I just know how now to do the deep stretches. We focus like 10 yes. minutes after class to do it. Um, so my hopes is that I can eventually touch my toes with like not feeling pain, but no, I like it. I also like, it's a different form of movement than like weightlifting mm-hmm. or running where like, you're almost more appreciative of your body. It's like very yeah. self love. Yes. Chill music. You're it's just you. No one's going to yell at you if you have to take breaks. It's like, it's just at your own pace. And I think that's really nice. Cause a lot of classes like berries, that's not the case yeah. necessarily. They're like, go, 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 no. go, go. This is just like, if this feels good do or do this alteration or, you know, try this for a extra challenge. Um, and it's always cadences. At least my classes are always this cadence of like, let's start just getting the movement. Then we'll add in a second step and then we'll add the steps together. Uh, and I like that. I like that form because you're kind of learning something new each time. I like that. And I should two caveats. When I said 35 or 50 Canadian versus you said American. So 35 Canadian is 20. American and 50 Canadian is like 35. So oh. I should premise because people are like, oh, discrepancy. I was like, we actually said the same numbers, but I okay. did a little math. A little math okay. for y'all. You're welcome. Well, mathy math. Math, math. And I should say one thing I do love about Pilates, what Sav, just c- carry off that. I feel a lot of people throwing around the word like intuitive, in, like feel your body. How should I recover? Intuitively eat. And I think it's a little unfair sometimes. People like eat intuitively. And they're like, intuitive, my body's telling me to eat a Dorito. I don't know what to tell you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I feel like you're like, I feel Pilates is one of those good ways to like connect with your body. Like just the slow movements and like going through the full range of motion. I think it's like a really nice way to learn like what your body actually needs. And like you said, just learn how to move your body and like an appreciation for it. That's where I think Pilates really is like, that's where it really succeeds is in doing that. I agree. I also think it's cool. A lot of the women that take this class, um, they're like these moms, these badass moms that, oh my gosh, they kick my butt in Pilates. I think that's so cool. Like I I think sometimes people think as we get older, we can't do X, Y, and Z or yeah, you may not love a Barry's boot camp anymore, depending on what you like mm-hmm. to do, your age, your time constraints, whatever. But I love that Pilates is like welcome for all ages. Um, and it, it just, it's also very feminine, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Like there's not a lot that is like that. Um, yeah. Not that it can't be masculine, like men can also do it too, but it's just like mm-hmm. a different flow. I think. I love that. I love that. To finish off, if you got time, because I know you got to run, can we answer one question from our audience? Yes. So you're on your hair growth journey. So I thought it'd be only appropriate to ask, what are your current hair routines right now? Oh my gosh. Perfect question. So 
I started taking Nutrafol and I mm-hmm. started that about a month ago. Um, haven't really noticed much. I basically noticed my hair was thinning up at my scalp. Um, to be fair, I had stitches when I was young. So like mm. I have a bald spot. Um, I yeah. always have, but I just like, I woke up one day and I noticed like, what the hell is going on? My hair is so thin and it was just really around my face frame. So I started Nutrafol cause I read that actually helps a lot. Um, and then I also started hair oiling. So I bought mm-hmm. a bamboo brush. I bought all this on Amazon and everything was about eight to $12 and nice. it lasts you a long time. Bamboo brush, uh, Millet rosemary oil, probably butchered mm-hmm. that name, and then black castor oil and hoba oil. And mm-hmm. I put that on two hours before I shower on my scalp and then around like my ends. Uh, once again, it's only been a month and it takes a while. So I, I don't yeah. know if it's working. I feel good about myself that I'm doing it, but you're Love. the queen of growing your hair back. So what did you do? Yes. So first I went and asked a professional because I think we're all guilty of like, oh, this influencer told us this. Oh yeah. This I got what I'm going to go do. Exactly. And like, I found I wasted so much money in the past just listening to what, <laughs> and I know this is ironic that as an influencer, I'm about to tell you what I do, but I was able to figure this out by finding a hairdresser that specialized in long blonde hair. And so Chris Weber, if you're in Vancouver, love him to death. Go check him out. Um, but he just like even told me like the type of hair I have. Like, are you thin? Fine. Do you have a lot of hair? Not. And then the program that I'm kind of on is I do two hair washes a week. One is for strengthening because I had some damage. So it was about just strengthening, make my hair strong. And the second one was like a really hydrating. I'm a dry girl. I've just said a thousand times. So it was like really about drying and then having a hair mask. And then just kind of like listening to my hair. I found like, oh, my hair is feeling weak and breaking. I'm going to do a bit more like Oplex 3. So the Oplex is the strengthening one I use. And then I use an Orbe hydrating. And if my hair is really dry, I'll throw in a hydrating mask and leave it on for like an hour, two hours before I do it. And that's really all I do. But I do have one extra bonus product that we're sweaty girls. And sometimes you're like, I can't just get by with two hair washes a week. And then I use the Orbe cleansing cream, which like, it's kind of unsatisfying because you wash your hair and your hair still feels greasy a little bit after, but you get all like the dirt and the product out, but it leaves like the natural oils. So I'm like, no, I'm I'm not going to do that. Like before the night I go out, but if I just have a regular work day the next day and, or I don't want to go to sleep with sweaty hair, I use that product. And I find just like learning my hair type and listening to what my hair, the state it is in this moment versus just doing this routine because it's my routine, like listening is my hair dry, weak, brittle, fizzy, whatever it is. And just, yeah, pay a little attention to your hair. And that helped a ton. That's cool. So the cleansing, so you do wash it three times then? If I need but to. But one so would it's just only two be the times. cleansing. Yeah. So, and then I usually add a conditioner because my hair is dry. Like some people could just yeah. get away with the cleansing cream. But yeah, it's either Olplex for strengthening. That's like a Tuesday. And then like Friday or Saturday, I'll do Orbe's hydrating, which is the yellow or the black and gold. Uh, if you've seen it, one of those and the mm-hmm. shampoo and conditioner. And then both of those have like a, a mask. There's a hydrating Orbe mask and then there's Olplex 3 strengthening mask. And I know okay. Olplex people are like all in the K8, but I'm like, we don't just have to buy a new product just because it's new. You know what I mean? If it, it, Olplex worked for me, so I'm not just going to jump on K8 just because this new it thing. And it's like, I'm like, if it's working, it works. You don't always have to buy the new it product if something works. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. But well, there you it. have it. All right, guys. Oh, there was a new mm. review. Oh, please and tell. Please it, tell. Because we can't cry wolf and say, leave a review and then ignore it. Um, okay. Wait, let me go to our podcast. Okay. Hitting the bars. So here's a reminder. If you want to leave a review, um, we'll read it. Hopefully it's nice. Give it a five mm-hmm. star if you want. We would love um, that. okay. So this was from two cat six. Love this podcast. It's an easy listen where you can learn, gossip, and laugh. It feels like I'm getting a coffee with my gym besties after a good lift. Would recommend. Oh, we love. That's so exactly kind. what we wanted to feel. So thank That's you. That's so nice. Thank you. I'm like, in the past, we've had some really mean reviews. So it's so nice when someone's like, That's exactly what we want. Gym besties, mm-hmm. but we can gossip. We can have a cocktail. Yeah. Very nice. So thank you to Cat Six. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. We love you. 
Yes. All right. With that being said, we will see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.